All right. So welcome to Breaking the Devil's Contract podcast. Um, we're just going to jump right in. We've been talking about stewardship. So to kind of go over what we have been talking about, there's... Um, so we can look on Anchor or any other podcast place. And we can see what the other teachings were. So let's go to Anchor here. It's going to let me sign in. Yeah, I don't know about that. Okay, well, I'm already logged in. So, the previous episodes <laughs> were, um, wow, so it's on stewardship, all of it is. So, um, the first lesson was, what is stewardship? Um, we explain what stewardship is, and then we go into uh, stewardship and you. Can God trust you? And then um, stewardship, narcolepsy, and prayer. <laughs> and, um, you know, this has really been about living your lifestyle um, as living your life as a lifestyle of stewardship. And um, getting back into that, stewardship is a way of life. It's having the mind of Christ and... Allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to you, the Word of God to transform your mind, and allowing you to um, be a good steward or a guardian of the things of God in your life. One of those is resources, and my pastor, um, Pastor Adam McCain, is uh, actually talking about that right now, about uh, stewardship and the resources that God gives us. And so, uh, being a good steward is definitely about resources, and um, but it's it's more than just money or things. It's a res it's a being a good steward of our thoughts, um, of our actions, of our words, um, of our time, and so that is just huge right now, um, just trending in the kingdom of God. Um, so, now, another one I have is stewardship of prayer. That's really important because the Holy Spirit needs to move on earth and he uses people in order to do that. So, um, you know, we have to think about are we being used by God in prayer? That way he can bless us and bless others. Um, so, now we're going to go into, um, and I encourage you to go back and listen to all of those podcasts, those are amazing, uh, spirit-led, um, I have guests on there that are, uh, talking with me about these subjects and just how it applies in their lives, um, today I'm rolling solo, but, um, I'm, that's because I'm live on TikTok as well, and, uh, at reverend.paulcross, and so, um, you can check that out, Breaking the Devil's Contract is the name of my book and the name of the podcast. So uh, that book dropped a little over a year ago on Halloween, which is just amazing because it's spiritual warfare, folks. Um, uh, tip my hat off to you on this. And I'm wondering, like, you know, you can put in the comments or whatnot, like what y'all think about coffee being a sin or a sinful habit, right? Um, and I can do a, definitely would like to do a podcast on that, because <laughs> it's, um, the Mormons 100% think it is, and, uh, so that's interesting, but, let's get into prayer, and let's open this up. Heavenly Father, I ask that you would bless this podcast today, Lord, um, let your wisdom and guidance be here, be evident, Lord. Holy Spirit, lead me. Um, bring the people in that are supposed to hear this or see this, Lord, and just minister to them, Lord. And um, we ask you to bless this time, and Holy Spirit, speak through me. 
Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wow. I do pray that because the last thing anybody wants to do is just hear me talking. Um, so, because everybody has an opinion these days, and really, uh, it's just a waste of time to hear somebody's opinion. Because otherwise, uh, anybody could just grab a mic, and then everybody would be broadcasting all day long, all of their opinions. It'd just be a total waste of time. Uh, the Bible talks about that fools are quick to give their opinion. So, <laughs> I like to um, give absolute truth, and that being the Word of God. Um, I try to keep my opinion out of it um, when I'm teaching the Word of God. And even in life, I don't like to, <laughs> you know... Um, counsel people or do anything without consulting what the word of God says it's the instruction book for life so all right starting off with the text today in the Bible Bible is the word of God hopefully y'all don't mind uh, reading us reading that um, so it's uh, this text is Matthew chapter 25 verses 14 through 30 it's the parable of the talents Okay, so starting in verse 14, Jesus said, For it'll be like a man going on a journey who calls his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He had received the five talents, went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So, Verse 17, also he who had the two talents made two more talents, but he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. That's a key point, master's money. Verse 19, now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered me five talents here, I made you five more. The master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Wow. Powerful. It says here, uh, I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Okay, verse 22. Then also the one with the two talents came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here, I've made you two more. The master said, You delivered me two talents. Um... Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter in the joy of your master. So these two had the same results. Verse 24. He also who had received one talent. Okay. He, it says here, came forward saying, Master, you delivered to me. Um, okay, verse 24. Sorry. He, he also had received one talent. Came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, have what is yours. But his master answered him, you wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown, and I gather where I scattered no seed. Right? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. Wow. For to everyone who has more (laughs) will be given with an abundance. Wow. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. That's uh, troublesome. It says, And cast the worthless servant into outer darkness. Uh, in that place, there'll be weeping and gnashing, gnashing of teeth. A lot to unpack here, um, verses 14 through 30. Um, I know you have some opinions about this as well, but, um, we're not going to go with opinions. Let's look at what the Word of God says. There's one with five, one with two, one with one. And you can see here that being a good steward, right? They didn't take the master's money and give 10% back to the master and then go and um, 
spend the other 90% the way they wanted to, right? That's what a lot of uh, Americans do. They say, well, um, you know, I'm going to... I'm going to just tithe my 10% and I'm done. I can do whatever I want to the 90. That's mine, you know? And um, I want to reverse that trend because the Bible says that um, we are stewards of God's money. And so um, we should be pretending like all of it's his. Um, we should be asking the Lord, like, what should we do with the rest of our paycheck, you know, after we pay bills and, um, tithe and things of that nature, like, okay, Lord, like, what do you want me to do, you know, with this money? How can I, um, further the kingdom? And so that's what I want to get into. Well, you have this interesting principle here, um, of the kingdom, right? So the kingdom is something that we're a part of as Christians, but it's bigger than us. It's something that we surrender to. It's ultimately God's plan and will for the earth. And um, it's also a part of all the spiritual heavenly bodies and um, just everything godly. It's this kingdom, right? Um, you have the, the, the devil's kingdom, right? And that's all demonic, right? So um, with the kingdom of God that we're a part of, um, how do you kingdom spend? That's my question. Um, does it cost you? So right now, right, I'm, last time I checked, I don't get anything in the mail for making a podcast or being on TikTok. So, um, this is costing me to do this, to, to take the time out to teach and to, um, deliver the word of God and pray with you and um, help you to understand the things of God. So it's costing me right now. But with your walk with God, what is it costing you? Um, I want you to think about that in your personal life. Like when you wake up, like on a Monday morning, you know, what do you do throughout the day and before you go to bed that night? Have you done anything for the Lord. Um, think about it. Did you pray that day? Did you read the Word? Did you have a devotional? Did you talk about God with someone? Did you listen to Christian radio? Did you listen to a sermon? Did you get into worship? Um, are you allowing the Lord to have part of your schedule? And that is going back to um, kingdom stewardship with our time. So, but it all just, it just comes together. Does it cost you, since we're talking about money and things like that? It should cost you to uh, sacrifice your time, your effort, your prayer, your money. Um, when you're doing things for the kingdom, right? Jesus said that those that are the leaders will be your servants. And so, uh, if you're not showing an initiative to do anything for God, then um, when you're calling upon the Lord, um, it's kind of hard for Him to uh, reward you when you're not doing anything for Him. Does that make sense? So, uh, not that God's based on the reward system, because He's not. He loves us all the same. But we have responsibilities, like in this parable right here. Um, he gives certain people, like in verse uh, 20, um, you know, I'm actually going to go and um, these talents, right? Um, God gives us talents. And it's not necessarily money, but it's the ability to make money, right? So, um, here he's talking about talents, actually something you can hold, right? Um, but the Lord gives us all talents of how to make money, right? So, um, if the Lord was sitting, you, was sitting with you in your room right now, you wouldn't, he wouldn't come up and give you a gold bar and be like, okay, go make five gold bars, you know? 
he's given you the ability and the blessings, um, the understanding, the mental capabilities, uh, the charisma, the, the, the being smart enough to teach or help someone or go get a job, you know? So with these talents that you have, are you using them for the kingdom of God? And this does boil back to finances, but, um, finances has a lot to do with the talents God's already given you. So are, have you surrendered that to God? Right? Um, things to think about. Moving right along. Um, kingdom stewardship with money. So how long is your money lasting? You know, are you desperately waiting for the paycheck to come around? Or can you sit on money? You know? Um, do you have a savings account? Um, do you have somewhere that you tithe to faithfully? Is it your church or other ministries? If not, you can um, definitely tithe to this ministry. We go into jails and I deliver my book, Breaking the Devil's Contract. That's what you can see here. And I hate it on TikTok because it's backwards. But um, yeah, you can see that on Amazon. And um, you can donate at um, Impact Prayer Ministries. And um, on TikTok, I have uh, different, um, well, it's BTDC, Breaking the Devil's Contract. Um, but yeah, we go into the prisons and we give these books out, you know, and uh, nobody's making me do this. It's not about building my brand I actually wrote this for prisoners. So um, moving along, like what kind of ministry do you have, you know? Just think about it. So, are you good at making your money stretch? Since we're talking about money, I'm going to get back to money, I promise. Um, you know, are, are you making it stretch? Is your money being a blessing to you? Or is it kind of a curse because you're trying to spin it as quick as possible? Um, so, kingdom stewardship is 10% tithing, of course. You want to give that back to the Lord. Now, but the stewardship that we're talking about right today is using the other 90% with God's guidance. That's what I want to talk to you about. This is what the talents, the parable of talent is about, right? Um, if God is giving you these um, abilities to make money, like are you are you using them for you? You know, um, are you, are you scared? Like that, that, that one servant that only had one talent, just buried it. You know, oh, I don't want to use it, um, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, like maybe for instance, you're a gifted speaker and, but you're afraid to get out there and get rejected. You know, like, oh, if I go minister or talk to somebody on the street, they're going to reject me and yeah, I just don't want to go through that. Right. That's uh, that's being fearful. It's being disobedient. And so um, you want to use these talents the way that God wants you to use them. So don't put them away. Don't bury them. Step out in faith. Let the Lord guide you. And um, you'll just be blessed whenever you do it. And it's just awesome. Um, so moving right along. Um, this 90%. Right. Um, how does that look? Like, do you have the best cell phone plan? Can you drop that down? Um, making a budget, right? I want to suggest to everybody write on one piece of paper the 20 top 20 things or 30 things, whatever you spend your money on that month rent, bills, food, haircuts, you know, oil changes, whatever. Just list out everything. Um, Entertainment, toilet paper, just everything you can think of. And then put out beside it, like, what do you think you spend on it? It was just like 500 on rent and um, 200 on food, 200 on um, going out to eat. Like, those are two different things. You can go to the store and then spend 500 a month there and have all the food you need. But then you go out to eat five, six times a week and spend another 500. So you're blowing a thousand dollars a month on food. It's crazy. Most people do actually spend 
more money in food than they do on rent. And it's not like they're big fat people or something. They're just getting um, junk food at a really high price. Three to four times the price it takes you can make it. So um, be a good steward with the 90% that you have. You know, cook at home, invite friends over, whatever. Start a cooking class or go take a cooking class. That's being a good steward with your money because long term, you're going to wind up knowing how to cook. And that $500 you spend on the class or even $1,000, whatever, over a 30-year period, you've saved hundreds of thousands of dollars that you can use for God's kingdom now. See what I'm saying? So, uh, this whole thing of the kingdom, right? The kingdom, what does that mean, right? The kingdom is God's will on earth, right? Um, his plans for the earth, for his people, his whole, how his whole kingdom is set up. Um, part of that kingdom is the church, pastors, preachers, teachers, evangelists, um, the actual people that go to the church, me and you. Um, so we have responsibilities as well. You know, like you could be stepping up as a leader in the church, small groups, elders, parking lot, help, uh, greeters, all sorts of stuff. feel like the Lord's telling me that he wants people to see your smile. That people need to see your smile. Not someone else's. Like the Lord wants you to be there. And to be the encouragement and the light for somebody else. And if something that's just as simple as a smile, I feel the Holy Spirit saying, can brighten someone's day and encourage them. To walk closer with the Lord and be better. And that one smile could start a network with you and this other person. Start a relationship that will change your life. But we have to be there in that moment and sacrificing and being in the kingdom, right? So I'm going to bring all this back around. The goal of God's kingdom, right? If the world was going to end tomorrow, we all face judgment. So we have to think... Okay, what was God's whole plan in all of this? Um, we all face judgment. Did we accept Jesus? Are we going to heaven? In the Bible, it's called the Great Commission, right? So right before Jesus left, you know, like when someone's departing your presence, you're not going to see them again, maybe ever. Um, what y'all talk about at the very end is probably really important. Like, hey, I love you and I'm going to miss you and blah, 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 right? So in Matthew chapter 28... Verses 16, it says the Great Commission. It says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him. It says, But some doubted. Verse 18, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all of the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. So, that is called the Great Commission. Okay? The Great Commission was given to the apostles to go and to disciple and evangelize the whole world, all nations, everybody. In turn, right, whenever they minister to someone, that person gets taught and they turn around and minister to somebody else. And it never ends, right? So it happened to me. Now I'm doing it with you. I'm discipling you. Um, this is the Great Commission. This is what it's all about. We're supposed to be leading people to the Lord, right? Um, so... Whenever we're, um, whenever we're preaching the gospel to people, telling our testimony, we should be asking them if they know Jesus, if they want to be saved, right? So, um, that's, it's getting people saved to where they don't go to hell. That's the Great Commission. So, let's move backwards from that point. This is God's will. This is God's last words that he spoke, right, to the disciples given the Great Commission. Um, it's not the last words ever. But it's the last words before he went to ascend up to the Father, right? 
So this is his departing message on, hey, this is how I want y'all to do everything. Later on in Revelations, he gives other advice for specific things. But this is to stand forever. So we are supposed to fulfill the Great Commission, right? And so with your money, (laughs) I'm not taking a donation, but with your money, okay, are you fulfilling the Great Commission? Like, are you giving 10%? Right, But with the 90, are you saying, you know, I'm going to take another 5% of my income and I'm going to go and uh, use that for gas money and go and serve in a soup kitchen or uh, talk to people about the Lord on the streets or, you know, get involved with church and use that little gas money to go back and forth to small groups and we're going to go out in the community or just whatever, right? Are you fulfilling the Great Commission? Are you talking to people about the Lord? Um, But with your money, right? Um, Are you making it last to where if the Lord calls upon you, um, you have money in savings? Whether it's only $100 or it's $10,000 and he's like, hey, I want you to help this person out, you know? And it's above and beyond, but hey, God's asking you to do it. And if you do it, of course, he's going to bless you, right? So he's challenging you. Um... But the Bible says you cannot serve God and money. You can't have two masters. So um, I want to encourage you to stop serving the master of money, which is itself. It's the love of money, you know, and what can it do for me? And is it going to give me popularity? Is it going to make me look better? My ego, my my agenda, whatever, right? So... um, I want to encourage you to put God first and to um, be a good steward with his money because it's his. Um, And the devil can step in on that 90%, you know, that um, we gave 10% to God, so our money's going to be blessed, right? Well, no, not if we use it all for lottery tickets and then lose every every lottery uh, ticket we scratch off. Um... God will bless our other 90% if we continue to look to him and say, Hey, God, where should I use this money right now? Should I invest in this stock? Should I do this or that? You know, um, a good rule of thumb, tie 10%, save 10%, invest 10%, right? Um, then after that, you have 70% to live off of. I would suggest with that other 10%, Do something productive that will help exercise your talent, right? Like I said, taking a cooking class, um, learning a new language, um, trying to work on your talents, um, something that will help build your career, your future. Um, Invest in yourself with that 10%, not just money, you know? So that leaves you with like 60% left. Um, And depending on the job that you have, you should be able to live off that no problem. And you should be able to save another 10% or invest another 10% or whatnot. Um, So, if not, yeah, put put that money towards yourself. Get a new skill. Um, Get another job, another uh, another stream of income. You want passive income, right? The stuff you make while you're asleep. The 9 to 5 income, right? And you want to have some sort of investment somewhere, even if it's in real estate or just whatever. Um, Let the Lord guide you on that. Um, So, be wise with your money. Um, Be wise and be a good steward of everything. Your time, your thoughts, your passions, um, just everything with the Lord. So, I want to challenge yourself. You know, that what would Jesus do? Um, Ask yourself, how am I helping the kingdom? Am I building the kingdom? Am I fulfilling God's will? Because I'm going to tell you this. <laughs> if you're going to help build God's kingdom, he's going to help you out. He's going to bless yours. You see what I'm saying? If you're fulfilling God's will on the earth, getting people saved, getting great commission, um, teaching people about, you know, baptizing them, um, um, supporting your church, you know, getting involved with God's business, God's going to bless yours. So uh, he'll give you supernatural dreams, visions, uh, con- divine connections. I mean, it's just amazing. So trust God. Be a good steward. Uh, I want to see God bless you. 
and um, you know help give to this ministry. We go to prisoners. We we want to see people's lives changed. Um, but if you don't want to give, that's fine. I'm glad that you're listening. That's great. Um, but you can give at Impact Prayer Ministries or BreakingTheDevil'sContract.org. Um, you know, buy some copies of the book. You can contact me directly at BreakingTheDevil'sContract at Hotmail.com. And um, definitely the podcast anywhere you're listening. Spotify, um, Anchor, Apple, anywhere. So um, thank you for tuning in. Be a good steward. Oh, man. It's such a blessing. Uh, God has given this treasure in earthen vessels. And the treasure treasure we have, really, the talents we have, is the Holy Spirit inside of us. It's the most precious thing on this planet. And um, God will bless us if we walk with Him. So uh, it's been exciting to be with you. Let me pray for you. You know, if you're listening to this podcast or watching me live on TikTok right now, um, knowing that you're going to go to heaven and have your sins forgiven is the most important thing ever. And so the Bible says that Jesus died on the, on the cross for our sins. Um, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have it, eternal life. And believing in Jesus... Right, the history books believe in Jesus, but they think he was just a, a common man or a prophet or whatnot. But Jesus was the Son of God, and the Bible declares that he died for our sins, and he came like the Lamb of God and shed his blood and atoned for our sins. So what that means is you don't have to earn your way to heaven. <laughs> that's 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 actually really good news, folks, because uh. I catch myself, I know a lot of people try to catch themselves trying to be good people, trying to impress God, trying to impress themselves, trying to impress other people. We always come up so short, impossibly short, and we fail, and it's terrible. So, um, it's good news that we don't have to perform to get God's love. He just loves us. It's, it's amazing. That's great news. Um, so, God died for you already. And he rose again. That's what the Bible says. Jesus, Matthew 28, rose. He ascended to the Father and made atonement on the mercy seat in heaven. Um, wow, all that is in my book. I want you to read that. Um, the whole Old Testament mercy scene uh, where the priest had to go and uh, make atonement there. And Jesus is our new high priest. And he did that for us and, and did it in the mercy seat in heaven. So we are forgiven if we believe in Jesus and accept that forgiveness that comes through him by grace through faith. And so right now, I just want to encourage you, if you have never known the Lord, never um, met him, don't know where you're going when you die, I want to encourage you to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And um, just do that right now. Um, just say this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son, Jesus to die in my place on the cross. I'm a sinner and I need your help. Please forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I accept you. Forgive me and wash me clean. Give me a new slate, a second chance, a new beginning. I accept your love. I can't do it myself. Jesus, be my Lord and Savior. I love you. Help me to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. It's that simple. The Lord, wow, he is so amazing. If you accepted that free gift just now, wow, your whole life has changed and will continually change. So I just want to say I'm proud of you. That's awesome. And um, for those listening who... Um, have already done that, go help others. <laughs> go and uh, spread the good news of the Word of God and um, get in your Bible. Go to Bible college. Um, a lot of free stuff online, a lot of good teaching. My book is amazing. Let me just read some uh, chapter titles for you, okay? Um, 
if I was gonna die, my my three sons, I would tell them, read this book. Okay, chapter one. What is the devil's contract? Okay, so this gets into how the devil lies to us and wants us to believe him over God. Chapter two, absolute truth. This goes into uh, believing the word of God over anything else. And then there's the contract of deception, contract of pride in chapter four, chapter five, the contract of wrath. I actually give an example of a contract that you can actually sign with Satan. It's crazy. Um, but signing it is agreeing to it verbally. Um, chapter seven, the contract of religion. Contract of lust, contract of condemnation, contract of worldliness. Okay, these are all sins that we get into, and this is using the Word of God. There's over 365 scriptures in this book that teach you how to use the Word of God against the devil, just like Jesus did when the devil tempted him in the wilderness. Um, then chapter 10, one on chapter 11 goes into the rest of the remaining chapters are all about victory in God and how to walk with God and have a victorious lifestyle. So the unmatched power of God, chapter 11, chapter 12, the abundant life. We have a abundant life we can live in Christ. And it's amazing once we are good stewards and following God. Um, chapter 13, practical spiritual warfare. This will teach you how to fight against the enemy. It's amazing. Um, but we can't fight unless we're filled with the Holy Spirit and have the armor on and know how to use it and know how to um, like David and Goliath, you know, let the Lord armor you instead of trying to go get in some armor that's not going to fit and doesn't work clanky, you know, don't know how to operate. Um, chapter 14, an unstoppable royal priesthood. That's what you are. Find out how. Um, so I give, uh, breaking, I give contracts, examples of how the devil comes into our lives and breaking the devil's contract right here see the handshake i'm showing my book on tiktok so um subscribe to me reverend.paulcross um at reverend.paulcross on tiktok um email me and let me know about uh what kind of topics you want to you know talk about and um future podcasts so let me just pray you out lord i pray you bless the people listening lord um use them help them to be good stewards and to be a mighty force to be reckoned with on this planet, Lord, for your will. Bless them, bless their weak, bless them with any kind of trials they're going through, Lord. They are victorious in Jesus Christ. Romans sixteen nineteen says, For the God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. So, Lord, thank you, Father God, that you are um, making an open spectacle of the enemy that's trying to come against our lives, Lord. And you're opening that door that no man can shut, Lord. I give you the praise. I thank you, Lord, for being a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And your love is just amazing. We love you and we bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we'll see you next time on Breaking the Devil's Contract. Um, be blessed.